So uh, today in my presentation, I'm primarily going to be talking about moving beyond traditional MDM, which I thought would probably grab the attention of those who are interested in adapting uh, you know, an enterprise mobility management infrastructure um, into your organizations and those who are interested in getting to know how things have evolved in the context of enterprise mobility management you know, uh, in the last couple of years. Before we delve further into the, the contents, we'll, uh, I'll briefly walk you through the outlines of the presentation. First, we'll be checking on how the traditional NDM landscape looks like and what it is all about. And also, as we go on, we'll get to know how things have evolved you know, during the last couple of years to become what they are right now. And next, the, the focus would be on some of the trends and challenges that the organizations today are generally posed with while adapting a new enterprise, infra and enterprise mobility management infrastructure into the organizations, which would hopefully set us a better platform to discuss about how WC2 Enterprise Mobility Manager can potentially be pitched in as a solution to most of these challenges around. If time permits, we'll um, then take a look at some of the key benefits that the WC2 Enterprise Mobility Manager in particular would bring into an organization in terms of operational and financial aspects. So first, what, what's traditional MDM landscape? What is it all about? Before that, we'll, we'll take a look at how the traditional and organizational structure looks like. So in, in um, traditional organizational environment, you would come across a lot of enterprise entities and resources like that. And on one hand, you've got devices. And on, on the other hand, you've got employees and data. So in, in most of these traditional environments, these enterprise assets or the resources were operated within, within some predefined boundaries um, belonging to all these different business organizations. And the management in particular of these resources were pretty primitive. For, for example, when it comes to data, the data was not exposed to public, you know, exposed outside the corporate networks at all to be accessed by even the employees of these organizations. And when it comes to devices, well, the employees didn't have too many options to pick one from when it comes to the devices that they usually used in these traditional organizational environments. And these were mostly desktops and stuff like that. And uh, so also when it comes to the system administrators, who used to provision these devices, the, the, the management skills and the management techniques and paradigms they used were pretty primitive. So they were mostly focusing on uh, managing the physical aspects of the devices, like physical features of devices through policies. And uh, so, um, but so th this was, you know, mainly viewed as um, something like a closed source of, sort of environment. Um, and uh, was primitive. But after the introduction of entities like iPads and all this cool and fancy stuff, this closed infrastructure exploded. And then organizations started adapting you know, uh, mechanisms and methodologies to, you know, and basically all these new device types around to make sure that their employees stay productive. Not only that, and the, the organizations you know, as a whole, themselves stay productive and improved. So this has resulted in these organizations around adapting more and more of management infrastructure to manage enterprise mobility. So this is proven by many of the surveys done by uh, some renowned market research bodies. For example, IDC. One of the IDC reports on Asia-Pacific mobile market fragmentation states that over 70% of the organization in the Asia-Pacific Asia region have taken some sort of an initiative to manage mobility, which is a really good trend, I would say. But ironically, the same report states that only a very few of these organizations um, have, have gone beyond um, device-only management and adopted much more broader techniques that would uh, not only secure their devices, but also secure their applications and data as well. Maybe this has happened because there was some lack of awareness of uh, why some proper 
and, and you know, mobility management infrastructure, overall mobility management infrastructure is required in these organizations. So maybe you know, uh, that happened because uh, these businesses in the Asia Pacific region have not evolved to an extent where they've extensively used these new device, new and cool device types around. However, th this report was published in 2014, and after about one and a half years back, uh, af after about one and a half years, so we now see today that more and more organizations started going beyond just merely managing their devices, and, and they started adopting and embracing this modern landscape of EMM, which involves not only managing these devices, but also the applications and related data, as well as other key elements as well. So what's this modern EMM landscape? You'll get to know about it in, in a second. So before we uh, take a look at what this modern EMM landscape is about, we'll try to understand how the, uh, you know, what the organizations, modern day organization structures work. Let me take an example, Amazon. So in, in Amazon, we've got tons of, uh, like thousands of em employees working together in various disciplines, for example, you know, these disciplines might, be, might vary from um, engineering to sales and so on. And these employees work from different departments, different sections, different infrastructures and so on, you know, uh, in their day-to-day -day, um, organizational tasks. And also, the, I mean, the, the locations of these employees can also be different with the interesting concepts like globalization. So you now see that even people from various different countries across the world work collaboratively together to, um, to the success of a given organization. For in, the, in, the, in the context of Amazon, so Amazon has people working from India, United States, and a lot of other countries. So uh, they, they work collaboratively you know, for the success of the organization. And these various employees who are working from different locations access data. And these data are stored in like, different data centers across the world. And this data is exposed, you know, not only over the corporate networks, but also, you know, through cloud services, APIs, and, and stuff like that as well, which is then consumed by devices and uh, applications installed onto them. So the, the whole landscape or the whole setup has, been, has become complicated than it has never been before. So it's, the need is pretty apparent that you need tools to manage this stuff. You need, you need tools to automate these complexities and so on. For example, if you take a look at the device, man device section, so uh, people have nowadays started bringing their own devices into these um, enterprises or the organizational environments, whereas some of the people still use the, the devices that were provisioned to them by the organizations, organizations themselves. So the, the whole thing has become complicated. So we need tools. We definitely need tools to manage all these complexities, which, is why, which, is, which has been the, the primary basis for a lot of the people to come up with tools and technologies to manage all these challenges and trends around um, and mobility management. Now, that, this brings us to a very interesting point in the discussion where, where we start wondering what these trends and challenges are all about. So first, this is one of the, the very critical aspects of the, the enterprise mobility management, modern enterprise mobility management paradigm. So the, the, the organizations have gone beyond the traditional mobile device management and they started thinking about connected business. In 2015, the, you know, most of the initiatives that were taken towards managing mobility was around introducing concepts like you know, BYOD and uh, supporting all these different you know, uh, device ownership schemes like bring your own device, corporate owned uh, personally enabled devices and stuff like that. But this has shifted, this focus has shifted dramatically uh, you know, today where people have started looking at much more of a holistic approach of solving this problem. And uh, they now think about, they, no, they now not only think about you know, these various ownership schemes like BYOD and stuff like that, but they now look for tools and technologies that would allow these enterprises to you know, in integrate these EMM infrastructures into all these enterprise-wide entities like for governance, for instance, and for analytics and identity provisioning. So this device managing, management is not only about merely managing, securing, and storing devices anymore. It's about you know, making the whole enterprise management 
uh, infrastructure a part of the, the whole enterprise business ecosystem. So this has one of the key aspects, key challenges and uh, you know, uh, uh, trends that we've seen during the recent past in the context of enterprise mobility management. What's next? So the OS fragmentation. So now you might wonder what OS fragmentation is all about. OS fragmentation is simply different users use, using different versions of the same operating system you know, for their day-to-day -day tasks. Let me take an example. Let's say um, WSO2 is planning to run a BYOD program uh, you know, uh, in their organizational premises. What that means is, so these empl you know, employees, all the employees at WSO2 would be expected to bring all these Android devices that they are comfortable with into their organizational environments. So there, I might probably be using a device that runs Marshmallow, which is the latest version of Android, whereas some of my colleagues around would be using devices, you know, uh, running maybe Lollipop or Jelly Beans or something like that, because, you know, the latest statistics show that uh, still 24, 25, uh, like nearly 25% of the people uh, who are using Android devices are still running Lollipop or they are still running Jelly Beans and stuff like that. So the key question for, you know, uh, the uh, system administrators and the IT operators is how to manage all these complexities, how to enforce enterprise management schemes and the technologies that could potentially address all these different sorts of devices running different sorts of operating systems. So I, I just explained, you know, how the situation is when it comes to Android. And when it comes to iOS also, the situation is pretty similar. You know, if you, as the picture on the slide depicts, still 17% of the people are using iOS 8. So this fragmentation is there all, across almost all these device types. So the, whatever the enterprise mobility management infrastructure that we need to have within our organization should be able to address all these different sorts of devices. They should be extensible enough to support all these new, dif you know, different types of OSs and devices and so on. So that, that has been one of the key requirements of the organizations lately. So what else? Easy customizability? So what do you guys think about that? So when it comes to easy customizability, so a single generic offering or a distribution can't support all these needs of enterprises, you know, all these needs of the enterprises today. Because I might have a different set of, I might have a set of, um, you know, requirements that I need to fulfill, uh, you know, uh, by using an enterprise mobility management infrastructure, whereas, you know, some of the other organizations might have different plans. You know, in other words, I might be interested in solving some of the physical features, like whether to allow cameras, you know, in my organization and how to provision Wi-Fi credentials and email credentials to the employees in my, you know, uh, organization, whereas some of the other people might, might be interested in controlling some of the data analytics configurations and so on, you know, with the, the help of enterprise mobility, their respective enterprise mobility management infrastructure. So whatever the product or the, the infrastructure that we use need to be able to cater all these requirements. They, they should allow a plug-in model or APIs or extension points for us to be able to integrate this whole enterprise mobility management infrastructure into various other tools and uh, technologies that you might already have in your environment like analytics, analytic tools, and then, um, you know, governance tools and so on and so forth. So then the corporate app stores, this can be viewed as one of the critical, uh, you know, requirements that the organization today usually come across. Why this is needed? So according to most of the online resources published, it is pretty apparent that a high percentage of the applications or the mobile applications uploaded into public stores are malicious. So enterprises should have a mechanism to control what, these, what their employees install into their organization-owned organization devices, maybe. So, uh, and also, the, you know, the, the, that, that functionality should come within the enterprise, enterprise mobility management infrastructure itself. And also it should support adequate infrastructure to moderate, approve, and uh, provision apps across different devices in the organization as well. So the story doesn't stop there. So 
you might also look at rich analytics as part of your enterprise mobility management offering or the adop adopting enterprise mobility management offering. So there, rich analytics is, is, is key. Analytics is an integral part of pretty much any business strategy from the point where the data is collected on all these business activities and they are analyzed and visualized. You know, all these tasks should be comprehensively supported by, you know, a, a today, a, by a modern enterprise mobility management infrastructure. And we should have dashboards, audit trails, and reporting to supplement business strategies as well, which, is, which can be one of the driving factors that would take you to the next level of your business. So lastly, security and compliance. This is also one of the critical tasks that nowadays organizations are mostly focusing on. So there, as part of it, you need to have a comprehensive policy management infrastructure, you know, which would not only help you manage your policies, but also you know, help you enforce these policies as well, particularly in the context of compliance monitoring. Compliance monitoring is key if you want to you know, uh, have a good understanding on what devices in your environment breach, you know, the organization policies enforced upon them. So it's, it's really key that we have a policy, ma policy monitoring in mechanism in place to identify instances like that. And, and also, containerization, data encryption, passcode enforcement, as well as, you know, the ability to revoke access when the devices are compromised should also be provided as part of any enterprise mobility management infrastructure that would potentially be used in the modern day enterprises. So how to solve this problem? You know, most of the organizations are puzzled by the fact that they, they quite don't know how to address most of these challenges that we just talked about. But the answer is very simple. What you gotta do is, you gotta get the right tool for the right job. But it doesn't, it, it, it is not easy as it sounds. Because you need to think about a couple of aspects, like very critical, critical aspects, before deciding on an uh, enterprise mobility management infrastructure, you know, um, which you would potentially use in your environment. Not only it should support the challenges and trends that we just talked about, but it should you know, uh, support the, the growth of your company as well. As time goes on, your company, will, your organization will mature. It will grow in resources, for example. You know, as time goes on, you might have a lot of employees coming into your organization, and you might have a lot of resources, devices coming into your organization. So your enterprise mobility management infrastructure should be able to scale itself up whenever it's needed, whenever the load, load gets high. So it's, it's really important that you know, the, scalability aspects, it, the scalability aspect is widely considered ad while adapting an enterprise mobility management infrastructure into your organization. And also, um, it should also be capable of winning the, you know, uh, winning the employees, winning the approval of the employees. After all, your employees are the most important enterprise asset in any organization. So it, it's really needed that you win the approval of these devices. Most of the organizations, well, I would say some of the organizations have failed to, uh, you know, uh, establish a proper enterprise mobility, mobility management infrastructure in their organizations because they fail to impress their employees, you know, uh, with, uh, or, or they fail to put, a, put an adequate emphasis, uh, you know, uh, with, with their employees as to why this, this sort of an infrastructure is needed. So your, whatever the adapting mechanism or the infrastructure should be able to be customized so that it would win their customers, or it would win their employees, rather. So, and now you may wonder, I mean, do we even, I mean, do, do solutions like that even exist? They certainly do. And I would like to, you know, uh, introduce one such solution that could potentially address what we've just talked about, which is WSO2 Enterprise Mobility Manager. So now let me uh, take you through a uh, you know, very comprehensive and end-to-end, -end, you know, uh, use case where, you know, potential users or potential organizations could, you know, uh, could make use of, uh, you know, uh, after adapting Enterprise Mobility Manager. So let's, let's say this hypothetical device manager called Drydex produces 
POS systems in our web for a market, supermarket chain called Supermart. So one of the objectives of this Drydex, which is basically the, the device manufacturer, to offer an out-of-the-box device and application management system you know, as a part of their end-to-end -end solution. So what do they do? They adopt WSO2 EMM as a potential solution. So what happens next is the device manufacturer, the Drydex, you know, the in-house IT department of Drydex extends the WSO2 EMM's plugin model to write a new plugin to support POS devices because uh, WSO2 EMM does not support managing POS devices out of the box, but it has a very rich plugin model where you can come up with, uh, which can easily be effectively be used to come up with you know, plugins to support pretty much any device type around. So once the device plugin is written, Drydex then ships this new, new plugin added to WSO2 EMM together with their POS solution to Supermart, which is basically the target supermarket chain. And what the system administrators of Supermart would then do is they would install WSO2 EMM and the POS systems you know, within their environment. And then the IT operators and the administrators of Supermart will be able to define security, network configuration, and application management policies as part of the, the key and core uh, policy management infrastructure offered as part of WSO2 Enterprise Mobility Manager. So once this task is done, then the IT operators and the administrators can enroll these POS systems with the, infra, you know, the mobility management infrastructure and roll out these devices and application management policies that they composed as part of the previous step. IT operators and administrators then group these POS devices you know, for more granular man management. You know, EMM is, is going to have this functionality to group these devices so that it would allow system administrators and IT operators to have more granular control of certain groups of devices. IT operators now have the ability to audit, monitor, and generate reports of these device groups independently through dashboards again, in, uh, which is part of WSO2 EMM. So at some point, now the, the, the setup is all done. Now at some point, Droidex2 recommends Supermart to uh, you know, upgrade the operating system of POS system to install some critical security fixes. So how do we do that? So the WSO2 Enterprise Mobility Manager is going to introduce this really cool functionality to handle um, OS upgrades and all these OS installations uh, which we call as boot, boot, mani boot management, boot uh, uh, system management, so which can then effectively be used by these operators and uh, administrators to uh, perform that particular task. And then Supermart's in-house IT department now wants to add a new loyalty program in Supermart applications, which uh, which they run in their POS systems. So what they do, but they what they do is they release a new version of Supermart X app and upload it into the fully fledged corporate application store, which is part of the, the WC2 EMM distribution. And next, the, this, this new software update is rolled out to POS systems via the app store functionalities in WC2 EMM, which basically sums up the, uh, the whole end-to-end -end use case that I wanted to take you through. So this clearly shows the capabilities you know, of EMM as well as how powerful it is in terms of addressing the enterprise challenges that we just came to know, you know, uh, while we were discussing about certain other, you know, uh, components and paradigms uh, during the, uh, the discussion. So now let's take a look at, you know, uh, some of the key benefits that the WS2 Enterprise Mobility Manager in particular would bring into an organization in terms of um, operational as well as, well as financial aspects. So it, it allows us to compose, enforce, and manage granular level security policies for individual as well as groups, uh, d depending on you know, the role or work style or, or, and stuff like that. And also, it, 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 it makes it possible you know, to make strategic decisions with the data gathered through all activities, all business activities related to enterprise mobility management over a simple and clean interface and powerful dashboard. Going beyond that, WSO2 EMM also strengthens businesses 
through secure access to information through data encryption, passcode enforcement, enforcement, and so on. And then users can also select devices that best meet their individual needs, including personal owned devices or company owned devices, with, while they're still being managed over a centralized entity. And also, it enables employees to be more efficient you know, uh, with the adoption of device ownership schemes like BYOD as well. So if you take a look at some of the financial benefits, so you can totally get rid of unappealing paper device sort of models, pricing models, um, with the use of w Enterprise model, w Enterprise mobility management infrastructure. And if you've got in-house expertise, you are totally free to download, deploy, and run all these servers absolutely at no cost on your own as well. And going beyond that, embracing ownership schemes like BYOD and uh, you know, they, they save the enterprise procurement and data plan costs associated with each user, which can also be you know, uh, a real benefit for most of these modern devices, modern infrastructures and organizations around. So with that, um, that basically sums up you know, the discussion about you know, how we could uh, you know, move beyond the traditional landscape of MDM and embrace all these new tools and techniques you know, uh, to, to improve you know, your organizational infrastructure in terms of enterprise mobility management. And uh, if you, I'm happy to answer any questions if you guys have any. <laughs>